Hi, this is Steve, K8BZ, and this is the first uh, video in a series of videos that I'll be doing uh, describing how to use uh, a TNC based packet radio controller on HF. Uh, I already did this introductory video once, posted it on uh, YouTube, and uh, it was pointed out that this uh, video had a flaw in it that uh, I just couldn't leave online. So that or original video has been deleted and I'm redoing it. Uh, the idea for doing this actually came from a suggestion from Edwin K7ELM and it was also Edwin that uh, discovered the flaw in the first video and made me aware of it. So I wanted to thank uh, Edwin K7ELM for pointing that out. So if you already are a subscriber to my YouTube channel or playlist and saw the first video, this is a correction of that first video. It's going to correct that flaw and also include an omission that I should have uh, covered in the first video. So this, this video is going to be a little more complete and hopefully won't have, uh, won't have another uh, flaw in it. Uh, so we're going to talk about the commands that you need to be aware of and the differences in the command. Now all of this information is going to be based on TNC based packet radio operation. There are other ways to do packet on HF and VHF that don't involve a TNC but we're talking about TNCs and specifically uh, with a Cantronics uh, either a CAM Plus or a CAM XL TNC. Uh, Edwin was requesting information on using a CAM XL on HF I don't have a CAM XL, I have a CAM Plus. Uh, my CAM Plus is about 20 years old. The CAM XL is the current version that has a few more features than the CAM Plus. They operate almost identical, but some of the commands are different between the CAM Plus and the CAM XL. So I'm going to give you just the basics to get you started here, and then we'll, we'll expand on that in subsequent videos. So this should be enough if you have your TNC wired uh, where you can get it on and actually monitor packets on HF and make a transmission on HF and then we'll describe what to do later in subsequent videos. So the first command we're going to talk about is the MyGate command. This command is only available on the CAM Plus. It's not available on the CAM XL. The MyGate command is a call sign that you set in the MyGate command that is your uh, cross-band digipeter. So anyone on VHF, for example, can include your MyGate call sign in their uh, digipeter path, and your MyGate call sign will tra retransmit that or digipeat that packet on the opposite port. If it receives it on HF, it'll it'll retransmit it on VHF. If it receives it on VHF, it'll retransmit it on HF. Now that uh, that uh, gateway digipeter feature is not available on the CAM XL, only on the CAM Plus. Uh, you do crossband connections using the node on a CAM XL. On the CAM Plus, you can either do it with the node or with a crossband digipeter gateway. Uh, the next command we're going to talk about is the carrier detect command. Uh, this can sound a little confusing, but let me describe the carrier detect. Uh, feature in a TNC. TNCs will not transmit if they determine that there's currently a packet transmission on the frequency. Packet frequencies are shared frequencies with many packet stations and they all can't transmit at the same time. They, they'll cause what's known as packet collisions and uh, throughput will drastically slow down so the TNCs have a method that they use to determine if there's a packet signal on the frequency. The method that they use is set by the carrier detect command. The CAM Plus has three possible settings for the carrier detect command, either internal, external, or software. If you set the CAM Plus carrier detect command to internal, that means that any audio whatsoever on the receive audio line will be interpreted as a packet signal and it will uh, inhibit the transmission ability of the CAM Plus. doesn't have to be a valid packet or data signal. It's just any, any signal whatsoever. 
Uh, if you are using your VHF radio in the FM mode and you open the squelch, and if that opens the audio line, just the open squelch alone uh, will cause your receive light to come on on the TNC and your TNC will not transmit. So uh, you have to close the squelch. Uh, if that audio line is a squelched line uh, in order to allow your TNC to transmit when there's no signal present. Uh, the next possible setting for the CAM Plus is external. If you're using a data jack on the back of your radio or an accessory jack that has the audio uh, and data inputs and outputs, they may have an external carrier detect pin on that data jack. That basically sends a voltage through that uh, that can be input to the TNC to tell the TNC when a signal is present on the receive frequency. So you have to wire a fifth wire uh, in your cabling from the radio to the TNC to a special pin on the TNC that will be the carrier detect external signal source. That isn't used often, but it is an option that's available if you want to use it. Uh, the third setting is software setting. Software setting for carrier detect allows you to have your TNC hooked to an audio source that is unsquelched. In other words, even if you have the squelch closed where you're not hearing anything from the speaker on your radio, the data output jack might be unsquelched where there's audio present all the time. So software for carrier detect in the CAM Plus means that it will look for valid data tones and only valid data tones will be interpreted as a packet signal and will inhibit transmit. So you can run open squelch. Now that in fact is what I have to use on my ICOM 7000 that I use on VHF packet. I'm, I connect the TNC to the data jack in the back of the radio and that audio receive line is unsquelched so I have to use the software setting. Now let's talk about the CAM XL and the differences. You only have two options with the CAM XL for the carrier detect command either internal or external. They don't have the software carrier detect. The reason they don't is because the internal command includes valid data tone detection. When you set the CAM XL to internal carrier detect, uh, it will only inhibit transmit if it identifies valid data tones for whatever mode you are using uh, on the input of the TNC. And the external for the CAM XL is the same as it is for the CAM Plus. That's wired to an external uh, carrier detect voltage source coming from the data jack on your radio if you choose to use that. Now, we're going to go, we're going to go over to the uh, terminal program for just a minute. I'm going to turn the monitor off. And we're going to look at a couple of things. Now, we already talked about the MyGate command. Uh, Those little red letters that come up, that's a spell check. That will go away in a minute. There it goes. Now, the MyGate command for a CAM Plus, and again, this is only available for a CAM Plus, is a call sign with an SSID. In my case, I use dash 3. Again, don't use dash 1 or dash 7. Those are usually uh, a bulletin board or a node. Uh, the MyGate command only has one setting. The MyGate call sign is the same call sign on VHF as it is on HF. Now let's look at the carrier detect command. The carrier detect command has separate individual settings for HF and VHF. When a command has two parameters that can be set individually for the HF or VHF port, it shows them both, both settings separated by a slash. The HF port is before the slash, the VHF port is after the slash. So if you want to change the carrier detect setting from software to internal, you type the command and then the setting separated by a slash. The TNC will tell you what the previous setting was before you made the change. If you want to verify the change, just enter the command and push enter and it'll tell you the current setting. So it went from software software to now software for HF and internal for VHF. Now I want to change that back. I want it software on mine for both. Oops, and I misspelled, got a typo here. Still do. Software, software. 
Uh, that's what I use on mine for my CAM Plus. Again, software is not available on the CAM XL. You would use internal instead of software. Okay, let's go back to our commands. The next command we're going to discuss is the transmit OK command. Now this is another command that's available only on the CAM Plus. The CAM XL does this same function uh, with a different command where they actually combine two commands into uh, and consolidated the, that into one. The transmit OK or XMIT OK command is either on or off. There's an individual setting for each port, HF or VHF, in the CAM Plus. And we'll go back to the terminal program. Transmit OK right now is off for HF and on for VHF. So I've basically shut off the transmission capability on HF. If I want to turn it on, I can just type the word on and it will set both to on. If you only type uh, XMIT OK. Let's spell it right here. Uh, if you only put one parameter in and no slash, it's going to set both ports to that same setting. If you want them different, off and on. I'm going to turn the HF transmission off and leave VHF on. I'll verify it by retyping the command. And you see that HF is off and VHF is turned on. Uh, so if you enter the command only once with no slash, it'll set both ports to the same setting. If you want individual settings for each port, you have to type them both separated by a slash. Now we'll go back to the commands. The transmit OK, again, that's, that's for the CAM plus only. That command is not available on the CAM XL. And this, this is the uh, discrepancy that uh, K7ELM pointed out to me. Now, the next command we're going to talk about is the HBOD command. In the CAM XL, the transmit OK feature is incorporated in the HBOD command. Now, the HBOD command is available both on the CAM XL and the CAM Plus. In the CAM Plus, the HBOD command only sets the baud rate the transmission baud rate for the HF port and the VHF port. On the CAM XL, the HBOD command also sets the transmission rate for HF and VHF, but it also can turn the transmission ability on and off at either of the ports, either, either or both of the ports. So for the on the CAM Plus, the HF baud rate is limited to 300 baud. And, and that's the same for both. That's what's allowable for an acceptable baud rate, a legal baud rate on HF for packet. On VHF, the baud rate is typically 1,200. It can be higher in some special applications, but for the most part, you're only going to see it at 1,200. And on the CAM XL, you set the baud rates the same way with the H baud command, but if you set either baud rate to zero, it shuts off the transmission ability on that port. So for example, if you set HBOD on the CAM XL to 0 slash 1200, it disables transmission on the HF port. If you set HBOD to 300 slash 0, then you can transmit at 300 baud on HF, but it shuts off your transmission on VHF. Um, so both TNCs are capable of selecting either or both to be to transmit or not transmit, but uh, the CAM Plus uses the Transmit OK button to turn the transmission ability on and off. The CAM XL uses HBOD to not only set the baud rate, but also disable the transmission capability. Uh, we're going to go talk about the My Node command. Now, My Node, let me go over to the terminal here for a minute. Check my mod. I want to make sure the monitor is off. My Node has a parameter that's that's the same on HF and VHF. So when you check the my node command to check the setting, uh, you'll see that there isn't one call sign with a slash and another call sign. The node call sign is the same on both ports. There are some commands that are the same on both ports. You can't make individual settings for HF and VHF. Uh, others like HBOD 
Uh, there's a setting for each port. Because I'm using a CAM Plus and not a CAM XL, if I try to set HB blood to 0 slash 1200, which on a CAM XL would disable the HF port, if I do that, it's going to tell me that the value is out of range. Uh, mine won't accept a 0 for, for H blood. So we'll, we'll leave it at 300, 1200 like it should be. But getting back to the my node command, uh, this is your node. Uh, another station can connect to your node and use your node to connect to more distant stations. Depending on whether you have your crossband feature enabled, they could even connect to another station. If they connected to your node on VHF, they could connect crossband to another station on HF or vice versa. They connect on HF, crossband to another station and connect on VHF. So that is your node call sign. Typically the SSID used for a node is dash 7. You could use a mnemonic, some stations do, where they use uh, an abbreviation that describes their location. Uh, that might be more useful on VHF where the users are going to be local and they'd recognize your mnemonic. On HF, the station, some stations use mnemonics and you'll get used to where they are after a while, but you might not recognize them because they're not in your local area until you kind of get used to what you're seeing on HF. The next command is the KNXCON. Uh, think of this as uh, the node in a Cantronics TNC is known as a KA node. So think of this as the Cantronics node X for crossband connection capability. So crossband node capability. If it's turned on, then someone can connect crossband through the gateway in your node to a station on the opposite port. But this command has to be turned on in order to enable that feature. Uh, when we get into how to actually make a crossband connection in a subsequent video, I'll show you how that works. Uh, but if you want them to be able to make a crossband connection through the node, you've got to have that command set to on. Okay, the last command we're going to talk about, this was the omission I made in the first video, is called the stream switch. The stream switch command. This is what you use to change, let's say you're talking to someone on packet on VHF and when you're done you want to switch over to HF and make a connection with someone on HF. You have to tell the TNC that you want to switch over to the other port. And in fact you can have several ports open on several, you can have both ports open on more than one stream at the same time. Uh, typically you wouldn't do that but it can be done and in certain situations is done. Now I'll explain the differences. There's a slight difference between the CAM Plus and the CAM XL. Uh, this may be a little confusing at first, but if you continue with a series of videos, this is going to become very clear uh, to you. In the CAM Plus, they have a stream switch for HF and a stream switch for VHF. The stream switch for HF is the tide character, title character, this little squiggly line. The stream switch for VHF is the vertical bar. Now let me go over to the terminal program and I'm going to, let's see here, I'm, I'm going to turn the transmission ability on for both ports. So I only have to enter on once, I don't have to do the switch. I'll verify it, that it's on on both ports now. So I, I just turned on the ability to transmit on VHF and HF. Now I'm going to use the stream switch for VHF, which is the vertical bar, and you designate what stream you want to use by a letter. Uh, in the CAM Plus, the stream available streams by default are A through J, but I have them limited to three streams per port in my TNC. So I only have three streams available, A, B, and C. So I, right now I've switched to stream A on VHF. Now I can use the S or status command and it will tell me the state of all the streams. This shows that my streams A, B, and C on HF, their status is all disconnected. This also shows that streams A, B, and C on VHF are also all disconnected, 
but stream A on VHF is the current input-output stream. That's what this I-O means. That tells us that that's the input-output stream. So I'm going to connect to a station, W8GDW. That's just a local station on VHF. I'm going to go back to the command prompt now, and I'm going to enter the stream switch and connect to stream B. Now I'm going to do another status check. Let's just look at the VHF section. That's telling us that stream A is connected to WAGDW, but stream B now is the current input-output stream. I'm still connected to WAGDW on stream A, but now the current stream in use is stream B. So I'm going to connect to KD8TUV-1 on stream B. Took a couple of tries to get connected, but we did. I'm going to do a control C, get the command prompt, do another S for status check. And again, let's just look at the uh, VHF portion here. Stream A on VHF is still connected to W8GDW. Stream B, which is the current input-output stream, is connected to KD8TUV-1. So I still have a third stream available, and in fact I can use the tide character and make the current input output stream stream A on HF. We'll do a status check. You'll see the current input output stream is A on HF and currently it's disconnected but let's see if uh, we can connect to KE, KE0GB-1. Now that's that's actually on uh, HF while we're waiting, we'll do another status check. We see that the current status of stream A on HF is a connect in progress to KE0GB. And, it, and here we finally began the connection. So right now I'm connected to three different stations at the same time on three different streams. One stream on HF, two streams on VHF. Now again, this isn't something typically you're going to do uh, but that I need to have you understand the stream switch. Typically, all you're going to do, and I'm going to disconnect. I'll disconnect from the on the HF stream. Now, as soon as I get the command prompt, I'll switch back to the. I'm going to switch back to stream A. Remember, the stream switch for VHF is the vertical line. Switch back to stream A. And then I'm going to go to the conversation mode. I'm going to enter the B character to disconnect from that bulletin board. Then I have to go to stream B on VHF. Go back to the conversation mode. Send a B to the KD8TUV bulletin board. And we're disconnected there. Now if I do a status check, you see all streams are disconnected. My current input-output stream is stream B on VHF. Well, let's just go back to stream A just for fun. Okay, so we're back on stream A. So with a CAM plus, if you want to switch from HF to VHF, use the title character that switches you to HF. We'll verify that doing a status check. See the input output stream is on HF stream A. If you want to switch to VHF and make a connection there, use the vertical line and the letter B. We'll do a status check. You'll see the input-output stream is now stream B on VHF, and we'll go back to stream A on VHF. So that describes the stream switch. That's how you switch on a CAM Plus from HF to VHF. Don't worry about how many streams normally, especially starting out, you're only going to use one stream at a time. Uh, and you may never use more than one stream at a time, but you need to understand that so you don't get confused when you see what you're looking at. Now let's talk about the CAM XL. The CAM XL does not have a separate stream switch for HF. They don't use this squiggly line character. They use the vertical bar, a port number. Now this won't work on mine because <laughs> uh, this is a CAM Plus. They would use the vertical bar and then a number indicating which port. Number one is HF, number two is VHF. So if I wanted to switch to the HF port, I'd enter the vertical bar, a number one, and the letter A. 
The number one would take me to the HF port. The letter A would take me to stream A on HF. If I try to enter a one here, it's going to tell me invalid stream right off the bat before I even enter it. So remember, the stream switch on a CAM XL is just the vertical bar, but you have to enter the port number after the vertical bar if you're changing streams or if you're changing ports. If you're going to stay on the same port but change streams on the same port, you can, you can omit the port number. It'll just assume that you mean the current port. But just for the sake of consistency when you're starting out, to change streams with a CAM XL, do the vertical line, port number, stream letter. Vertical line, port number, stream letter. Port 1 is HF, port 2 is VHF. While we're talking about that, you may be familiar with the monitor herd command. The monitor herd command in the CAM Plus will give you a list of stations that were recently heard. It will give you a slash and then tell you which port they were heard on, either HF or VHF. That's what the slash H and slash V is. On the CAM XL, if you do the monitor herd command, it's not going to have H or V for HF or VHF. It's going to have a number one or a number two. The number one is the HF port. Number two is the VHF port. Uh, we will demonstrate how to use that information later on uh, when we actually do some on-the-air connections and show you uh, what we're using. Uh, how we use these to actually make connections and communicate. So we've covered stream switches. Remember there's a difference. Uh, if you're using a CAM Plus, you need to use the title, squiggly line character, and the vertical line. If you're using a CAM XL, just the, the uh, vertical line, stream number, I'm sorry, vertical line, port number, and stream letter. Okay, a couple other things. When you're using packet on HF or VHF, enable the lock button on your radio. Lock your dial so you don't accidentally bump the dial or a button and move yourself off frequency. Make sure your dial is locked. Also, make sure your RIT uh, enable button is turned off. If you have your RIT button pushed and you're not exactly centered with your RIT, You'll be receiving packets okay if you're turn, tuned into them on HF, but you'll be transmitting off frequency. So uh, don't mistakenly leave your RIT function on. Also, I'm, I'm going to add something else here. If you're using the mic jack, make sure your speech processor or compressor is off. Don't use speech compression. Uh, you adjust the audio input through your mic jack by looking at the ALC meter. Uh, make sure your ALC is barely showing an indication on your ALC. You don't want your ALC way at the high end of the range. Adjust the audio input either from the adjustment, internal adjustment in your TNC or your mic gain if you're using the mic jack to where you have minimal indication on your ALC so you won't have a distorted signal. So that pretty much completes the introduction. If you have all of these set, uh, you should be able to monitor packets. You might practice making a connection or two. And in uh, subsequent videos, we'll show you how to actually do some very interesting things on HF packet and how to make uh, crossband connections with uh, nodes and or digipeters. So thanks for watching. Uh, please send any comments uh, to, to me via email at k8bz at arrl.net. And we'll see you in the next video, 7-3.